Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Castlevania Alucard figure. Back when they were doing a heck of a lot more video game figures and their player select line, NECA had put out four figures based on characters from the Castlevania series. And seeing that the characters portrayed in the line have been depicted in several different video games over the course of the franchise, I don't believe they're actually based off any one particular incarnation, though I may be wrong. I'm not super deep into the Castlevania series. I've really only played the pretty old games and I know these are obviously based off something a little more updated than that but I have two of the four in the original series I have Alucard here and also Simon the ones I'm missing are Dracula himself and the succubus Alucard comes with some cool accessories here we have his sword some great ornate detailing on the gold hilt there the ends are painted a black it's a very cool looking brass coloration to everything here then a very very long silver blade which looks really nice Alucard has a sheath for the sword so you could just slide it right in there for easy storage. Alucard also comes with a cross. We have a real metal chain here at the top. And it's just a cross here with a nice blue painted in the middle with white edges around it. A simple little accessory, but kind of a cool one to have. We also get this little plastic bottle of holy water. This is really nicely done. We have a cross as the bottle stopper. It's mostly a clear bottle, but you can see there's an inserted blue piece there inside to make it look like there's water in it. It is a really neat effect they created here, and I really enjoy this accessory. And then last but not least, the most important important accessory you could possibly have with the Castlevania figure. You get a pork chop. Comes on a little silver platter. Can't be removed from the platter, but it's a nice detail here. It looks nice and grilled. There's a bone sticking out the side. You've got the red meat sticking out of a couple parts of it, but it's a really nicely detailed little piece, and I'm glad they included it with one of these characters. And if you couldn't tell, this figure is based off Japanese artwork. We'll just take one look at the face and the hair, and you'll know for sure, because this thing has a very anime quality to its appearance. I must admit, I've never played any of the Castlevania games where Alucard appears. So the only thing I really know the character of Alucard from, and I know it's a completely different character than this, is from Universal's Son of Dracula. But the face has a lot of painted detail on there. His eyes are very large and expressive. He's got kind of just a pissed off look on his face. His face is painted white to make him look pale. Ironically, that doesn't carry down onto the neck, so his neck is actually very much a normal flesh tone. So it looks like he's just kind of wearing white makeup here. The hair on this figure is massive. They did a good job with the coloration on it. It's a pale yellow for the blonde, but there's also some blacks and grays mixed in with it to really highlight out different areas of it. We have big long strands coming down the front of his head, two smaller ones coming down around his neck, and this big awkward seamed on plume coming out the back of his hair, flowing off to the side, which causes this figure to look like he's constantly in a strong breeze, although it doesn't seem to be affecting his cape, so kind of an odd stylistic choice, I think, for that. Speaking of the cape, it has a massively high high collar. I mean, this thing is going up to about his ears and then flopping down equally as far. We have a big metal chain going across the front here. Now, I've seen with the Dracula figure, his cape was actually something you could unpeg and remove. I haven't found a way on this figure to feel like I could safely remove the cape. And even if I did, his hair would just look even more ridiculous since it wasn't draping over that high collar. We have a little neck scarf up here, which I really like because they painted a nice pearlescent white, which is kind of unique. Take a look at the coat Alucard's wearing here. It's basically something I feel like I would have gotten on that McFarlane Assassin's Creed 4 line. It's very piratey old school. It's got all the fancy little stuff and details on the front of it. It is a rubberized cape. The inside has a lot of great detail to it. It's only on the bottom here. Once you get up towards the body, it kind of disappears. But the area where you'll see it the most it has a really cool painted detail here on the inside. The undershirt has really good detail as well. A lot of silver buckles and ornate stitching in his jacket. Belt looks really good. It also has a metal chain coming off of it to hold his sword. The hilt is nicely done. It has a lot of gold ornamentation on it, but the whole sword itself is so damn big, it's really hard to position it in a way on this chain where it feels like it's not awkward. It ends up really just hanging down between his legs, which is really strange. The rest of the cape has a pretty good sculpt to it. It's a very dynamic sculpt, very glossy black here on the back and the kind of matte white up here on the front, which helps the character pop. Pants have some good wrinkles in it, and the boots very much match the cape, but the white inside folded down. They have a very good look of being black, shiny leather. He does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet as well. The arms are hard sculpted in contrast to the jacket. We have these very large pieces around the wrist, and then his hands are in simple black gloves. One hand's in a gripping position, the other more outstretched. For articulation, I feel like the cape really limits what we have here. The head is on a ball joint, so it will move side to side, 
side, a little bit up and down, but because of the hair draped over the collar and just the collar itself with the hair, you really can't get much motion out of it at all. Shoulders are on pin socket joints, so they go forward and back, also out to the side. The cape is rigid enough too that it will also pretty much stop his arm when it hits it, which kind of sucks. If we bend at the elbow, it bends about 45 degrees, maybe not even that. It's a pretty shallow bend, but we could also rotate. If a cut joint at the wrist, so we'll rotate side to side. Cut joint at the waist, where we could rotate. The legs, I can't even tell what kind of joint they're on. They seem to mostly be on a cut joint, so they'll move forward and back. But there is a little out to the side motion. I just can't tell if that's intentional or not. At the knee, he could bend. Also a pretty shallow joint, less than 45 degrees. We'll rotate at the knee, and then we have a hinge there at the foot. But without an ankle pivot, it makes it pretty hard to stand up in a dynamic pose. For a size comparison, here's Alucard next to the only Dracula figure I have, the Universal Select Dracula. And well, I guess they work okay together. Alucard's a little shorter. The Castlevania Dracula, of course, being very, very different than this pseudo Bela Lugosi style Dracula. And after reviewing this figure, I kind of wish I would have reviewed the Simon figure first. Just because knowing that figure, I kind of realized that this is a pretty steep drop off from the quality found in the other one. I think the anime style is kind of a strange choice, even though I have seen the artwork that inspired this piece. Between the cape and the hair, the movement is really hindered, and he ends up being a piece that you could display in a static pose, but if you really want to make him look dynamic and cool, you're going to run into problems. I think the best part about this figure are his accessories. He comes with some really cool ones, and they're accessories you might want with your Simon figure. But as a standalone piece itself, I'm not going to recommend Alucard here. I just feel like he comes up a little bit lacking. It's not a horrible figure. It just doesn't feel like it's as good as it could have been. Make sure you follow me on Instagram using him Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.